This was so much fun. Uh, it's Cannon, and we've got Ed Sheeran today talking about the new single Bad Habits and the new album, and of course, his new little baby. Uh, lots of fun stuff today. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we've got a new episode that drops every week here at Open House Party and OHP Uncut. It's Ed Sheeran. The OHP Uncut Podcast with Cannon. Hey, man. Hi, Ed. How are you? Good. How are you? Man, pleasure to have you here. Thank you. I appreciate your time, sir. Great. I appreciate your time as well. I'm so happy to be back at work doing interviews. Uh, hey, it's an honor to have you, man. Um, what a crazy time to have a baby. I also uh, had a baby, a little girl in the middle of all that, man. Wasn't that insane? Congratulations, man. That's great news. I feel like, I feel like most of my friends either had kids or got dogs in, yeah. in the pandemic. <laughs> a lot of people did. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're in sort of a crazy club. Uh, of people that did that how was the experience for you um like having a baby during covid yeah i think well it's interesting you say club because i had had two friends that had had babies before me and i kind of you know i was like when my first mate had a baby i was like 25 or something like that and i was like oh you know he's he's obviously like doing his thing and blah 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 and as soon as we had lyra i just suddenly got everything that he had like spoken to me about like because at the time I was like oh, it must be great your dad blah 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 and um I just feel like as friends now our friendship has just kind of solidified bond and it's weird you say club because I think that whenever you become a parent you sort of enter into this club that all the other parents are in and everyone understands each other there's like yeah. a like no one ever will be like I'll, I'll, my, my mum will like babysit Lyra for the evening and we'll go out for like a drink with someone who is also a parent and then we'll be like, oh, well, we're going we're to go back now. And there's no like, <laughs> there's no pushback on that. It's just like, yep, cool, totally understands, you know? There's no like, I'll oh, stay for another pint. It's cool. Yeah. Um, well, we're in a club of people. Okay, we're, we're in several clubs. Parents, uh, pandemic baby, and like girl dad. And I feel like being the parent of a girl, uh, the dad of a girl, uh, carries its own little special club with it, man. Uh, and I love it, don't you? I, yeah, I kind of, like, I would obviously be super grateful to ha be able to have any more kids, but I think, like, girls are far, far superior to boys. As a boy myself, I feel like I can say this. Would you, uh, <laughs> would you, like, try for more? Is that something you want to do, or do you just let it come as it comes? Do you know, I feel like we were so lucky to be able to have one that I, I think, you know, like I would obviously love more, but um, I think like I'm, we're so lucky to just have one. So I, I'm so, if nothing else happens, I'm so happy, basically. I totally feel you, man. And I want to talk about the single uh, Bad Habits, but right now, since we're in the club, I'll talk a little bit more and I want to, because, because I'm curious. Like, what kind of things is she into? Uh, our babies are about the same age, so, like, what um, is she doing? I mean, she's just started sort of, like, making attempts to crawl. She's babbling. She's just being cute, man. Just, I mean, she's nine, she's, she's, she's nine months old. We're not discussing the finer points of Shakespeare yet, but, you know, we'll get, we'll get <laughs> No, there. we save that. We save that for next year. Man, yeah, yeah mine is just uh, YouTube and what was, like, the... I, I know, it's like you shouldn't be showing the baby YouTube, but, man, sometimes you need a break, especially if you're at dinner. It's like, I'd like to be able to eat every now and then. Um, yeah, yeah. What's the best, like, baby gift you got? Do you know what I... The uh, England football captain, soccer captain, sent me a giant giraffe, <laughs> um, huge giant giraffe, and then my record label also sent me exactly the same giant giraffe, and it, they're such, like random presents to get but so in lyra's room she just has these two huge giraffes that sort of like peer over her cot uh, i quite like i quite like them i quite like them i think the best present what i'm saying to all my friends now like like we we, we have another uh, uh friend in our friendship group that's, that's having a baby and i think the best present you can get new parents is uh home cooked ready meals so yeah. just make just make a lasagna and drop it round Right. That's like, that's the best, the best thing we got. We had like friends that would just drop food around and you know, you know, you know what it's like at the beginning. It's like crazy, crazy, crazy. And you can't like even find time to feed yourself. And then at right. the end of the day, you'll just have something that you just place in the oven and then take out and it's, and it's done. So I'd say, I'd say those were the best gifts. Someone just came and filled up our freezer with things that, he, you know, he'd, he'd had kids and he'd like understood the same thing. So he just turned up and filled it with bits of lasagna and curries and stuff like that. I love that. 
I love that. And what, what a helpful gift because like time is a, is a huge commodity, obviously. And I don't know how you juggled, you know, being a new dad and creating new music all during a pandemic. Like, how did you juggle all that? How did you like manage? Well, I didn't, I didn't actually write anything for the first six months of Lyra's life. I was, I was like, I don't know if it was writer's block. I don't think it was writer's block. I just think I just, my focus was just on, on, on other things. And then, you know, she got to about six months and then I, I have a home studio. So I just started recording in that, but I bring her in with me and sort of do vocals with her, sleep on my shoulder and have a, we have a little like, one of the, what, what are they called? The little bouncers that you just Oh do yeah, that's it. what I call them, the little bouncers. Yeah, yeah. So you just could kind of be doing guitar and she'd just be sleeping doing the back. It's cool, it's cool. And I mean, being a, a, a girl dad changes you. For me anyway, it made me more like sensitive and my, all my emotions are heightened. Did she like influence any of your new music like lyrically or sonically? Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely the, the, the emotions, the emotions come out, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think I've, I've had a few changes in my life over the past like two years, not least like, you know, turning, turning 30 and becoming a dad. I had a friend passed away in March, which was like my first like experience with real grief. And like, I feel like coming to terms with being an adult, like I feel like my twenties with this, this crazy whirlwind of partying and working and traveling the world and blah, blah. And then everything sort of stops and I'm yeah, just figuring out who I am. Well, I'm very sorry for your loss, Ed. I'm very sorry to hear that. Um, Thanks, man. When the, the new single, when everyone hears it, if you had to describe it uh, in a few words, how would you describe the sound of it, the texture of it, the way it's going to make people feel? Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a dark tune, but it's really upbeat. Um, I know that sounds weird, but it's like it's got a very, very heavy beat. And, um, you know, when I was thinking of singles to put out, I'd chosen the single and it was going to come in June. And then Boris Johnson announced that England was going to be opening up in June. So I was like, I can't put out... I can't put out a like slow, depressing song. Let's like switch it to the one that's going to make, make people upbeat and dance, basically. I love that. And like I checked your website, there's still no tour dates, but do you have some things arranged behind the scenes? Are you now that we can finally like see a light at the end of the tunnel? What do you think? Well, I mean, that's the point. Like we can see a light, but the light is not like it's not there yet. So we've got all the gigs held, but I can't I don't want to put stuff on sale until like there's a few things happening in England this summer. There's like a thing called Reading and Leeds Festival. And I feel like every single musician in England is watching that festival and being like, if that goes well, tours are back on sale and let's, and let's, let's go. So uh, they, uh, we, I've just got to be patient and just wait. But everything's held. Everything's held. We're going to push the button if everything's good and then tour dates will go up and then, and then we'll tour. But I don't want to commit to, I don't want fans to sort of like, get excited, buy tickets, and then have to cancel. So I just yeah. want to make sure everything's, everything's all right first. And a lot of artists made that mistake. You've learned from that just by watching it, haven't you? You're like, Ehh. Well, I wouldn't, say, I, I, I wouldn't say it's a mistake because I think we felt like the whole time that, you know, we're told one thing that, you know, it'll be fine in three months and then it gets three months and it's like, oh, it'll be fine in six months. So I, th I feel like, I, I wouldn't say artists have made mistakes. I just think we've listened to the people in charge. The whole no, that's that's a, a very good way to put it actually Ed. um when it comes to the music uh did you did you, I mean, if you created a new album is there a bunch of songs we can expect um yeah there's a there's a whole there's a whole new record there's actually i'm 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 gonna be coming with a lot of music soon it's not just it's not just one one album um but it is just one album this this year but it, there's just i've written so many i've been writing this record since I handed in Divide, so it's been four years in the making, and there's just a hell of a lot of songs, so I'm just going to keep keep rolling. How many is a hell of a lot? I'm curious how many there are. I mean, about 250, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I'll probably, in, in the next sort of like two, three years, release like 60 of them that are good, but the rest are like dog shit. What, if, <laughs> what about like making the video for Bad Habits? How did you do that? How did you manage to, to juggle that into all this? Uh, I made that in uh, an area called Catford in London uh, with a director called Dave Myers. He flew over and quarantined for two weeks, which I was really super grateful for. And, you know, there's a lot of CGI in the, the video. So there's big groups of people, but it's all it's all CGI. So it's it, it looks it looks good. Have you ever worked like that before? Was that a totally new process for you? 
Well, I mean, the last time I worked with Dave was when I did the song with Travis Scott, and Travis was in... I was on tour in, like, Finland or something. Oh, no, I was in France. I played Bordeaux, yeah, that was it. But Travis was in L.A., so we actually shot our scene together on separate c um, continents, and Dave just, Dave just is a wizard with that sort of thing. Well, we can't wait to hear the song, man. We'll play it on Open House Party. Man, you've had the highest of highs and obviously the lowest of lows during all this, man, so... Um, I'm sorry and congratulations and thank, thank you, for your you time. man. Thank you. I feel like it's been a, it's been it's been a learning curve uh, for for um, everyone, and I'm so grateful. As I said, uh, I'm so grateful just to be back at work and you know around people. It's good. Well, we can't wait to see you when it's finally time, man. Thank you for your time. Perfect. Thank you so much, man. The OHP Uncut Podcast with Cannon.